I think that there is a distinction to be drawn between, uh, like I, I don't, I, I'll put it this way: the uh, radical race consciousness and complete color blindness. I think we can find a middle ground between that. What, co- what color blindness is an aspiration? Okay, that's the thing. Like you're 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 denigrating the aspiration without like what are you going to put what are you going to put in its place like literally california tried to pass a law repealing equal protection under the law in california so they could see race and divvy out goodies based on race that's right and it and it didn't pass because it wasn't popular no, Even it, though they it spent almost passed, it came, of dollars. It, it it wasn't came that very close. close to passing. Was it that close? Yes. I thought it was like, too, anyways, too close for I, comfort. I understand. I understand. Yes. I understand. So to me, I like the uh, view that is outlined by Barbara Fields and Karen Fields in their book called Racecraft. Mm-hmm. And I, in some ways, I divert from critical race theorists in this respect, in that I think race as the idea has come to be generally known in in modern western world right it has these connotations of sort of innateness or 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 kind of biological in nature right even though if you learn someone you could internalize the idea that race is socially constructed and yet still say that someone's half white half black and that whole equation type of thing makes it seem as if there's you know some real in innate reality to it and what i think is race in that sense is not real but race racialization in terms of seeing other people as racial and and being perceived as as a race as a member of a race by others absolutely exists and therefore races don't exist but racialized peoples and racialized groups do exist because of only because of stereotypes so and that's why you've got to, you've got to eliminate yeah, the right. stereotypes mm-hmm. but so, so, so socialization we we're talking about the different stereotypes that are implanted into people before they actually interact with the group so if you have classrooms where you're teaching these negative stereotypes of, of whites to people who've never you interacted teach with any whites, negative stereotypes well yeah this this is what the debate is over is the negative stereotypes well i i, I mean i thought we agreed already multiple we, times we we do we do we totally yeah. agree that the well, stereotypes it, it seems, are bad but it seems strange to me because i feel like you know growing up you know being a nice a nice liberal you know mm-hmm. a lot of the teaching and focus was on throwing away our bio- biological identities and saying they're not important don't fixate on race don't fixate on gender just you know, mm-hmm. Be the individual, be whoever you want to be. Right, it right. seems like a lot of the supposed anti-racism uh, rhetoric that I'm hearing now is the exact opposite of that. Totally. I agree. A lot of it is, yeah. Right. And I guess that's where my big contention is that to me, this is really bringing us down the path of screwing everything up again. Yeah. Because if you have, you know, I mean, like one of the one of the most important things to remember is that your enemies will always use your own tactics against you. And so... To me, if, if you're saying, oh, well, black people, not you, but I mean, like, you know, mm-hmm. general, whoever, you know, wants to say that we need to identify as a group according to our black identity and raise up our black identity as being important and powerful, then that's obviously going to breed white people doing the same thing. They're going to say, oh, well, we need to use our white identity, our white ethnic group to gain power in the world, which is like, well, we've been fighting against this for 100 years and we're just backtracking now. Sure. Um I think that that you raise an important point. That's a tough issue in terms of like the causal, the causal response being like, okay, well, if black people unify around their identity, then that's sort of going to cause a sort of white response doing the same sort of thing. It could be true. Um, I'm not sure. Well, I'm already seeing it happen. I mean, that's, this, right, but, really but I'm not weird. sure whether it's a causal response to that specific issue, you know? Well, the, the way, I mean, I think it is because, I mean, the way I see it is, you know, before 2014, when a lot of the woke stuff happened, you know, you could go on any internet space and it seemed like everyone had a very left-leaning, generally liberal attitude about stuff, colorblind attitude about stuff. And as soon as all the woke stuff started to come out, 
it's like, oh, then people started to be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be racist to be edgy and to make jokes. But then you started to see actual people were, were becoming more racist in response to the woke stuff. And it only makes sense because sure, the, sure. The, the human animal is going to look at another human and say, oh, this human is using X to accrue benefits. Okay. And so we see like with a lot of the woke stuff, you know, you're using your identity, your oppressed class identity to either accrue power or social status or whatever. It only makes sense that white people are going to say, well, if they're using that tactic, I'm going to emulate that tactic. I, I just, to me, the only question is to what extent that's like a natural response and to mm -hmm. what extent that is being socially incentivized by certain politicians on certain sides, you know? Well, like, to what extent is the rhetoric that is, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the whole like replacement, the great replacement type idea that this conspiracy theory that, you know, the Democrats are trying to replace all white people something like that, you know, like all these sorts of things. I think that politics has a lot, I think that a lot more of it is socially constructed than is natural, but I'm, we could still probably agree that like, once you have all the social mechanisms in place and human nature, given where we are in our society, mm -hmm. that it's going to produce problems. Yeah. Sure. And, yeah. And, and I guess it doesn't, to me, it's not really whether it's like, whether something, um, comes about naturally versus someone some politician kind of spreads the idea it doesn't really matter because i would say well it's still a politician can't spread an idea that's not naturally appealing to people in the first yeah, place. yeah 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 so, I, yeah i just i just want to highlight like the sort of contingent nature of it yeah sure i mean but i mean but then again with the great replacement theory or whatever i mean we can't deny that yes the Democrats are currently looking at a coalition where they're saying we need to appeal to, you know, more minorities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they definitely have changed their stance on immigration, probably in response to that than they had, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Sure. So it's, right. It's right. Kind of like all these things have like this, there's truth there. And then each side kind of hyper, you know, makes each side makes the claim hyperbolic and kind of puts them off in extreme directions. Yeah. So I guess then the the last thing I would highlight in terms of like the benefit of it all. So like this ties into what I was getting at, like in terms of seeing things not as like races and like people as members of different races, but as society as being split up by these forces of racialization. And mm -hmm. if we recognize that, then we can emphasize the underlying common humanity and see that, you know, it's not our fault that we've been racialized in certain ways and that we've been associated with certain stereotypes or whatever. And that can allow for the kind of universal human understanding that can help create cross racial solidarity. And so that people can start to warm up to the idea that actually, well, look, given that this racialized group was oppressed for this long history in the United States, that well you know we that we can warm up more to the idea of them being given certain certain uh corrective measures or certain policies being put into place in their neighborhoods because they weren't allowed to live somewhere else etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. and to, to to see the sort of social socially contingent nature of it all could help us um Hey, hey, do you care if I bring another guy in, Sam? He's a real fucking ball buster, this guy. Fucking actual <laughs> justice warrior. He th he thinks it's no big deal that Kyle Rittenhouse crossed state lines. What a fucking, what a well, moron. Well, I, I just want to say um, in, in response to... Um... To, to what to what you liked about oh you guys were actually story. having a talk before i interrupt i'm sorry yeah i know go ahead go was that ahead, I, I mean i i like what you're saying i, I agree with the concept of what you're saying i think that's a good concept i just don't to me when i look at critical race theory it doesn't accomplish that it, it just says it says the first part that you know we're living in a society that you know has been structured by race but then it doesn't promote the idea that we should be dismantling you know, these racialized structures. It seems like critical race theory is sort of promoting and solidifying these these race structures. Yeah, I, I think here probably a lot of it is due to the different, uh, the different like sample sizes or the different sample materials that we have from critical race theory. I'm sure if I read 
you know, none of what I've read that you haven't read and, and, and all right. of what you have read that, that I would have probably similar sorts of criticisms. And I think if you read the work of uh, my professor, Charles Mills, especially his most recent stuff, I think you would, you know, find especially the fact that he's explicitly committed to liberalism. Well, I mean, send to me. I'd be interested to. Yeah, no, I, I definitely will. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that that seems to be about it. Most of the time that I'm defending critical race theory is because I just see it being completely misrepresented in the digital space. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that I think it's like, you know, the, the be all end all savior theory of mankind. Like I just I just want to stick up for a little bit when I see it getting treated like sure. a punching bag. But, you know, I mean, I, I would think you know, because James Lindsay usually is the focal point for a lot of the critique. And I mean, I think he would basically agree with everything I said, except with the exception, that obviously, he's more contentious when he talks about it. And he has more of a conspiratorial uh, overview thinking about it. But and he would never debate of, me. <laughs> well, he said this, it, he said this yesterday, right? right. Yeah. Why do you yeah. why do you want but, to debate but, James Lindsay anyway? I just want to expose the lies in his book and on his blog. Actual justice warrior is not near as smart as James Lindsay, so I think we can let him in here. I mean, he wants to. I think Sean wants to come in and yell at you. So if you're down, well, Sean, Sean's. I don't know that I agree with. Like Sean just knows more, has more information than me. Like I'm working on a comic 18 hours a day. I'm not keeping up on the local crime stats and stuff like that. So. I mean, you understand the argument that I'm making, Sam, which I feel good about. That you know, we seem to both be on board that the these negative stereotypes are the problem, and I just I don't. You're throwing away the one thing that we have in society to deal with it, and obviously, Sitch and I both think that's dangerous. So, well, I don't think Sam's throwing it away. I think we have a critical race theory is throwing it away. Yeah, we think we argue that critical race theory is throwing it away. Yes, yeah, that's our problem with it. Yeah. If Sam was a grand poobah of critical race theory, we'd be having a much different conversation here because right. Sam is under the same, Sam has the same difficulty that we have. <laughs> he doesn't have right. any pull in the critical race theory realm. 